And when you're shutting down your water supply for a community, um, you know, that's, that's an emergency. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inc.'s podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks for tuning back into this episode of the Awesome Inc. podcast. I am uh, sitting down today with Steve Chamberlain, he was the winner of the Five Across August 2022 pitch competition and uh, excited to hear, just hear from the man himself. He, he pitched, he rocked it, and uh, it's going to be cool to hear some of his background. And again, one of my favorite things to share in this podcast is talk with entrepreneurs across the state and figure out, hey, why Kentucky? Why are you here? So we'll dive into some of your background, what your actual product is, and then we'll get to hear about Five Across uh, and the recap from the event. And then we're going to talk about the finals. So. A lot to cover in a little bit of time, but Steve, grateful for your time and uh, excited that you were able to come down to the space and join us this afternoon. Yeah, great to be here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we'll kick off real quickly and uh, just let the people know who are listening, maybe who weren't actually at the event, Five Cross, who are you? What's some of your background? Uh, Hint, you were with the NBA for a little bit. (laughs) And just let people know, yeah, who you are, some of your vitals, maybe talk about your your partners with uh, your company, Waterwares, as well. Yeah, for sure. So kicking off with Water Warriors, um, you know, we we really dove into a problem that's that's out there uh, in the environment with uh, harmful algae blooms in particular and the excess nutrients that are making its way into the waterways. Uh, and that's been our focus even from the beginning, from the get-go. And uh, we continue to focus on that and, and help uh, remediate, you know, the excess nutrients that are making their ways into the waterways and having harmful effects on the environment. That's super cool. So that, that's a little bit of, of the why. S- Steve, was, was any of your background related to water or chemistry? or How did you, how did you end up uh, focusing on water and algae like you mentioned? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's been a bit of a crazy journey because it, it was a complete shift in focus. Um, you know, my, my first job out of college was with the Orlando Magic down in Florida. So an NBA basketball team, uh, which is a far cry from uh, focused on water. Uh, and I was there for a good 15 seasons, so it was um, a good part of my life that was focused in, in that area of, of sports and entertainment, and, and mostly in a sales capacity. So what was nice about that is you know, really got to learn a lot of skills, um, you know, not just, you know, from a sales perspective, but uh, just being involved with a top-notch organization uh, like The Magic. And, um, you know, I met my wife down there as well, and she's from Lexington, Kentucky. So when uh, we met, you know, she had even said, even before we have kids, that she really wanted to raise our family in Lexington and had a chance to visit, you know, all the way back beginning in 2002. So, you know, we would visit you know, two, three times a year, got to know the area. And uh, when our children got to be a little bit older, um, it just, the time was right to make a shift. And that's kind of how the transition started, you know, getting, you know, from from Florida you know, up to Lexington, Kentucky. And then at that point, I really hopped out of the workforce. It was uh, two years. I had the opportunity to stay at home with with my kids that were young. So it was a fantastic time. And it also allowed me to really figure out what is the next step. And and I knew I was going to make a complete transition um, and really was looking for an area to make a good impact, um, you know, have something to focus on and dedicate time, you know, and be rewarding. And, uh Water kind of found me. It was a chance encounter with our CEO, John Gradick. Uh, it was at a holiday party. I think it was the only thing I got invited to, you know, since I'd moved here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> thankful for my wife. She said, you're going to this this party. And uh, I had a chance to, to be able to talk with John. That was the first time we met. And uh, he was telling me some of the stuff that he was already getting into. And um, it's very interesting. And the more research that I did, the more I really started to you know, feel like that was a great fit, the the water industry. And that's that's kind of how it all started. From what most people would probably say from an outside perspective, working with a pretty elite organization, you said the match, you spent 15 seasons. I'd imagine you did a lot all over the range uh, for, for being there for so long. What would you say was, was the big, um, maybe kicker, and you might have alluded to this a minute ago saying the holiday party, but a big kicker that made you pivot to become an entrepreneur, going from, like you mentioned, the sales world, working in the sports industry to... Hey, water, water found me, but what, what, what caused that, that shift in what you're doing to, Hey, this is the direction I want to head now. Yeah. I think it's something I've always wanted to do. 
And I think that's why sales was something that I gravitated to. Although I didn't necessarily get into sales willingly, I was still kind of under trying to understand what it is that I sure. was I wanted to focus on, what did I wanted to do. But I did like being in control of, you know, the effort that you're putting in and what you're getting out of it. And I think some of that is is also the entrepreneurial blood, right? And so being able to you know, kind of hone those skills in, in that capacity in, in a really fun environment. I mean, um, you know, it enjoyed all 15 seasons with the magic, great people, great organization. Um, you know, it's looking back on those times, it's just a lot of great memories. And so, you know, being able to have that, but also be able to hone some skills to be able to be able to get into this space of more of an entrepreneurial kind of mindset. Um, but I think the short answer to it is, is it's something I've always wanted to do. That's great. Well, speaking of magic, we're, we're going we're gonna to transition here a little bit. And that's pretty bad, but we'll go with it. <laughs> of the, the problem that you're solving, you mentioned it, uh, the, the term was algae bloom or, or bloom algae. So what exactly is the problem that, you, that John and you realized excess nutrients are in the water and they're contaminating it? It's not safe to drink. Can you, can you talk about the actual problem that, that your, your team is solving with Water Warriors? Yeah. And I think, you know, when, when you look at, you know, what's taking place from you know water quality perspective, um, and this has been a learning development for me, and, and and really I'm I'm still learning. Um, but you know when you have excess nutrients in water, that that gives the algae the opportunity to feed on it, um, and the more algae that populates, then the less less oxygen in the water um, for wildlife. So that's what you see fish kills and and other. Um, you know, wildlife within the waterways that uh, they're not able to live because the oxygen has been taken away by these these algae blooms that have excess nutrients where they're really able to explode in population and then take up, you know, the available oxygen for, for living things. Um, but then you also have, you know, toxic form of algae, uh, which is is harmful, you know, not only to, to the environment and wildlife, but, but also to human health. And there's still studies that are being done on that, just, uh, you know, what those harmful effects are. Um, certainly it jeopardizes the drinking water. You know, when you have an algae bloom near a water intake for your drinking water, you have to shut the intake down because it's not safe to, to bring that water in and, and drink that water. And when you're shutting down your water supply for a community, um, you know, that's, that's an emergency. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. I, I read an article, article recently, I forget where in the States it's happening, but there is, uh, maybe it's Arizona that they're they're trying to repurpose. Uh, we'll just call it wastewater to be reusable. It's like what what people you know flush. Uh, so it's just interesting that we're 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 getting to a point in in time when we have the the means, the technology, the resources to like like you're saying, like realize, hey, we we have the ability to clean or sanitize or just be aware of what either we're consuming or how we can protect people as a whole. So. Super fascinating that again, you guys are removing harmful nutrients from water, and I know that there there was a referral from the the Launch Blue Incubator Program that uh, that they connected you with, with our team. So let's talk about the actual product. Like, where did this idea of and I'll, I'll give it away your your Poseidon pellets? Can you can you enlighten us on that? Also, I love the name by the way. Where uh, where did the idea come from, and what exactly is a Poseidon pellet and its its function? Yeah, so it was an evolution. Um, really from the from the the starting point for for the company we were more focused on a different product that was uh treating water biologically um so a, a media that would allow um microorganisms to grow which were actually doing the treatment of the water but it's very tricky um you have to really rely on a lot of other parameters to make sure that those organisms are thriving the way that they need to to be able to do the removal um you know of the contaminants in the water and when we started to dabble into more technologies that were um, adsorption or removal upon contact, uh, we had a chance encounter with um, Dr. Nataguda up at the US EPA uh, in Cincinnati. And he was also focused on, on nutrient removal. And um, it got to the point where we started you know, collaborating to this point of a cooperative research and, and development agreement which, I mean, the EPA has been a fantastic resource, not, not only in just the development of the product, but also you know, as we were getting deployments out in the field, we were able to take water samples and have those analyzed you know, by the EPA um, and 
they'd be able to report back to us the results and the findings from from that type of testing and to have you know that type of uh, resource available through this this whole development and also you know bringing to market has been outstanding and, and Dr. Nataguda is is a brilliant guy inventor of the Poseidon pellets in fact and uh, just always makes himself available um, for a guy like me who who isn't necessarily uh, have a strong science or uh, you know technology background he's able to field all these questions that I have and has the ability to to communicate those and transfer knowledge to me in a way that I can understand. Uh, so it's, it's really been a, a great match and, and, and very important in the whole development of, of Poseidon pellets. For the average Joe like me, how does this work? Do, how, how could I buy one if I wanted to put them in my home? I know for, for your team, direct sales is your, is your avenue for, for making money. So again, how does this fit in for, for me or does it need to be at a larger scale? Can you talk into some of that real quickly? Yeah, so I guess to address you know what what it is, what it does, uh, it's essentially you know, materials that we're able to pelletize that are chemical free, um, so environmentally friendly. And in fact, I, a lot of times I don't touch on it because it is we like to call it phase five, but they have the ability to be reused as as a fertilizer. Um, so that's how environmentally friendly they are: is that they're able to capture you know, these nutrients and then be repurposed as, as fertilizer and returning the nutrients back to the land instead of having them collect in abundance in waterways and create, you know, harmful effects and things of na that nature. But um, what, what happens is really it's as simple as just water flows through the pellets and the pellets are very selective in what they're grabbing and as far as contaminants from the water and they're focused on phosphorus and focused on ammonia, and that's it. So uh, all that testing that has been done at the EPA, they've they've run so many different tests of different contaminants. Because what happens if it picked up other harmful, you know, contaminants, and then you were putting it out in the field or or whatnot? Like you wouldn't be able to necessarily use it as a fertilizer if you're also transferring those harmful contaminants. But if it's just selecting the nutrients, being able to pull them out of water. Um, and then now you have this nutrient-rich pellet that can be repurposed uh, for beneficial use. Gosh, that's so cool. That's so cool, Steve. <laughs> so I, I hope you guys have some like documentary or some, some compilation of, I don't know, I just imagine somewhat of a, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, with the YouTubers, their, their brand is Dude Perfect, but they're a bunch of guys who like do cool sports shots. And when they finally get it, they celebrate. They're like, yeah, this took eight hours to make. We finally got it. But I would just love to see y'all in the lab like figuring out how does this work when you finally got the right you know the right yeah. combination you're no yeah, for sure cool. i think i think our celebration moments a lot of times are when when there is a deployment yeah. and um you know and, and the samples are collected and the samples are sent off and you know there's sometimes a waiting game and in, in getting the results back but then when that email comes out with the results you know, and, and clicking on that and yeah, seeing what the numbers say. And it's, uh, I think the, the, that's kind of uh, equivalent to what you're talking yeah, about of, cool. of, of uh, you know, making the shot, like that's having that data come back and it'd be the mm -hmm. data that you were expecting or the data, you know, that um, really showed positive results. Um, you know, that's, that, that is an exciting part of, of the process. I totally, totally agree. Last question, then we'll move on to talk about five across. So you, you mentioned how these pellets can be reused as slow release fertilizer. So do you literally just take a pellet out of, you know, the water source or the, the canteen or however it's being used and just drop it into the ground? Say, say you're a composter, uh, or my dad, who is a huge avid backyard farmer, I guess, or gardener, you can just drop it in your soil and you're good to go. Is there a process for how to repurpose that? Yeah, it could truly be that simple. Um, you know, being able to just kind of return it back, back to the land. I, I do think we envision it more as an ag tech company or somebody that already has, you know, a proprietary fertilizer blend and being able to, you know, take these pellets on and be able to grind them up and put them in their own proprietary fertilizer. But now instead of mining you know, these nutrients from the earth, you're now taking something that's been essentially recycled. Um, so you no longer have to, because phosphorus is a depleting resource. I mean, depending on what studies you look at, um, it's not going to last forever. There's there, there's going to be a time when, when we have mined all of it that we can uh, on earth. 
And so being able to have this outlet of being able to capture, you know, what has been used or the excess that has run off, um, you know, that allows for these pellets to be utilized. So we, we see it, I think, more as, as, you know, an ag tech company, you know, recognizing the fact that they, they have this volume of pellets that they're able to, to utilize. Uh, but it can be as simple as just, you know, putting them in your flower pot or whatever the case may be. Well, Steve, this is this is really exciting, and I'm looking forward to watching your com- your company continue to grow. And I know some of the next couple of questions we'll talk specifically about that. But again, congratulations to to your entire team for the win at last month's event at uh, at the Lyric Theater here in Lexington. Always cool to see entrepreneurs who are kicking butt and taking aim. So kudos to you, and would love to hear f- from either from your your team's feedback or maybe you personally. What was your experience at Five Across like? What were maybe a couple of the key takeaways or was there something that one of the judges said that was, you know, was, was the missing piece for something that you've been working on or maybe was the, the feedback that you needed to hear to go to the next step? Just throwing some stuff out there, but would really love to hear some of that feedback. Yeah. So one thing I'd say about Five Across is the energy that was in the room and it, it really took me by surprise. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that was my first five across that I went to. And I was really kicking myself because even presenting and, you know, it's a little bit different sitting in the seat when you're presenting because you're thinking about uh, trying to stay focused on when you do get up on the stage. But man, the crowd, uh, the atmosphere, the other companies that presented uh, really enjoyed you know, hearing what they were up to. Um, just the whole experience was something that I think everybody should come out um, and and put it on their calendar. I know you guys do it multiple times throughout the year, but it's just one, a fun event. And you also learn a lot about what some of these entrepreneurs are getting into and, you know, certain things that you may never think about and and realize that, wow, there's this whole other world out there. So it's uh, it was really a lot of fun. Well, Steve, obviously no harm done that. That was your first competition that you made an appearance at. But hey, also congratulations. The first one you came to, you won. So that's that's pretty impressive. Would love to know, is there any, you know, any any special sauce going on in, in your company, anything you're cooking up for the finals in a few short months to hopefully help you all seal the deal? Or maybe was there a comment said from a judge or someone from the community that you met afterwards that gave some feedback that you thought, hey, we can work on this in the next couple of months. This could help us improve overall to maybe win the finals. Yeah, I think uh, certainly just the developments that have happened from a com- company standpoint, um, you know, exciting things have happened since the last pitch. And so we'll be able to work that into the presentation. Um, but yeah, also, I think you guys do a great job of providing feedback, not only just from the judges, but the reports that we got from the audience and really understanding one, going through that competition, the atmosphere and and, and having a, a much better understanding of, of what Five Across is all about, uh, but also all the valuable feedback that we got from judges and, and the audience. Um, so all that, you know, we'll take a good look at and maybe have uh, something that we can pull from a bag of tricks and, uh, and just have a good time because really it's, it's a fun event and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Maybe once the bag of tricks comes out, What's going to what's gonna help propel Water Warriors over the next, we'll say 12 months or so, to accomplish maybe one or two of the big goals that you guys have on the radar? Any, anything that you're hoping to cross off the list here soon? Yeah, I think when we start looking at goals, um, really having a meaningful amount of deployments in a meaningful size that we can really see the impact that we know that this technology can make out in the environment. And, you know, as far as getting to that point, you know, we're well on our way, but to be able to have certain reports that show, here's what we were able to do for this community and that's maybe been riddled by algae blooms and um, has, has, has been a, a real impact on their community that, that we can come in and be able to provide the technology that is going to eliminate, you know, that, that, um, that problem for that community. I think those are the type of things that we're really looking forward to in the future, uh, where we can see the impact that the technology is making, you know, know, across the globe. It it is truly a global issue. And um, those would be exciting times. Well, Steve, we, we just talked about going globally. Let's bring it back down to the state level. So you mentioned your wife wanted to raise a family in Lexington. You're, you're, you're still here because of that that familial draw. But why choose to make Kentucky your home to continue to grow your business when you can go anywhere else? 
Yeah, I think as we really got into the entrepreneur community here in Lexington, uh, it's it's thriving, and there's a lot of resources. I know you mentioned uh, mentioned Launch Blue earlier, um, and and what you guys do here, and, and some of these outlets that are available for entrepreneurs, uh, which is is really helpful. I mean, any support that that can be gained is 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 truly helpful. But I think also the community, uh, the size. We like that, especially as as we're raising children, uh, and the overall feel of it. I mean, it's 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 amazing when we have visitors come in and they see just the uniqueness of the horse farms and the bourbon trail. And there's a lot of things that make this area unique and uh, enjoyable. And so um, I think all that factored in. Uh, it's it's been a great place to call home. That's great. Well, Steve, looking forward to watching you guys grow over the next couple of months and getting back together for the Five Across Finals. So again, thanks for the time. Again, congratulations on your win from August's event, and we'll we'll see you here soon. All right. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesomings Podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in, and let's start something awesome together. You guys rock, and we'll see you next time.